Hey everyone, I get asked all the time about Roth conversions, and I can understand why too. After a lifetime of paying taxes, it would sure be nice to strategically avoid some of those in retirement if you can. And so this is something that we look at in every retirement plan we do. And from my experience, there are cases where a Roth conversion does make sense and cases where it does not make sense. And after looking at hundreds of Roth conversion plans, I've noticed that there are generally three reasons that a Roth conversion could make sense. And today, I'm going to go over each of those. And we'll start with the most obvious reason and then move on to two other reasons where it could still make sense, even if the numbers may indicate that mathematically, it doesn't make sense. So to make sure we're all on the same page together, let's talk about the basics of a Roth conversion. This is where you take money that you have saved on a pre-tax basis, like a traditional IRA or 401k, and you transfer that to a Roth IRA. Now, the benefit of doing this is that a Roth IRA grows tax-free and withdrawals in retirement are also tax-free as long as you've met the holding period. But the downside is that when you do a Roth conversion, you pay income taxes on the amount that you convert at your current tax rate. And this can get very expensive. So the most obvious analysis is always centered around answering the question, will paying my taxes up front reduce my overall taxes throughout retirement? Now, I think there are a couple of other things to consider as well, but let's get started off by looking at the first reason to convert to a Roth. Will it reduce your overall taxes in retirement? So for our example, let's assume that we have a couple who is 62 and ready to retire. They have an IRA that's worth $800,000 and a joint brokerage account that's worth about $400,000 with a cost basis of $350,000, which just means that $50,000 of that account is subject to capital gains taxes. One spouse has a full retirement age benefit of $3,300 coming from Social Security, and the other spouse is going to get a spousal benefit of one half that or $1,650. And let's assume that they want $7,000 per month in net income. Now we could get all into the weeds here and look at the different social security strategies and get this convoluted, which does need to be done in a real plan, by the way. But to keep this illustration simple and straightforward, let's just assume that they're gonna file at full retirement age. So the big broad question we're trying to answer here is, can you lower your overall taxes in retirement by paying some of them up front instead of stretching them out over the course of your retirement. Now, this is pretty black and white. When we build these, we have to assume that taxes are going to follow the path of current law, which means that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is going to sunset at the end of 2025, and the tax law is going to revert back to the old system. Now, the likelihood of it happening just like that may not be very high, but that's what we know right now. So we have to use that or we're just getting into predicting the future based on gut feeling, which I also think has its place, but the hard data has to be based on real facts. And for this couple, we looked at several different scenarios, but the one that best matched their needs was to convert up to the lowest tax bracket. This means that once Social Security kicked in, they didn't have much room left for conversions, but they still had enough time before that to get about $300,000 of their IRA converted to the Roth. And this made a sizable difference in their retirement taxes. When we look at a comparison chart of cumulative taxes, you can see that the orange line, which represents the cumulative taxes for doing the conversions, was certainly higher at the beginning. In fact, it was higher all the way up until about age 76. But by age 85, there was a $65,000 benefit to doing the conversion. And by age 90, which we show as the end of plan, there was over a $150,000 difference. Now, taxes aren't the only thing you wanna measure here. You really need to look at the total cost of converting because in some cases, that extra cost could be in the form of a higher Medicare premium. And prior to 65, it could also mean that you have to pay more for your ACA health coverage. Now, this is something that we look at in all of our plans by establishing a baseline plan, which is simply the plan with no optimizations like Roth conversions. That's the only way that I know how to do a comprehensive cost comparison. 
Now, the second reason to think about Roth conversions is if you think taxes are going to increase in the future. You know, in just a few years, we're looking at the expiration of the Trump tax cuts. And at the same time, we're hearing about the current administration's proposal to raise taxes. So a lot of people are starting to wonder if yet another piece of conventional wisdom, financial planning, is wrong. And we've all heard this. You should put your money in pre-tax savings because when you retire, taxes should be lower. Well, maybe not. In fact, right now, taxes are about as low as they've ever been. Let me show you an example. Let's say that you retired in 1980 and wanted $33,000 in gross annual income. Now, that may sound low today, but adjusted for inflation, that's about $120,000 today. So how much would you have owed in taxes on that $33,000 back in 1980? Well, when you apply the adjustments that were in place then and run that taxable income through the brackets, that would leave you a tax bill of about an effective rate of 23%. So that same amount adjusted for inflation, again, would be $120,000. When you use today's brackets and today's adjustments, that's going to leave you with a rate of about 13%. So I don't think it's beyond the scope of possibilities that we could see tax rates go back up. And right now, that's not something that's being accounted for when we do a Roth conversion analysis. You can't because it gets into the crystal ball thinking and trying to predict the future. Right now, we just have to move forward with assuming that at the end of 2025, the Trump tax cuts are going to sunset and the old tax rates are going to come back in. But if rates get adjusted higher, that's a game changer. And this is the part of retirement planning that has to be individually determined. You know, I often tell people that a retirement plan is one half data and one half emotions. Ultimately, you have to look at a plan that has actual real numbers and then determine how you feel about those numbers. If you feel fairly certain that taxes are going to go up in the future, you may want to ignore the Roth analysis, even if it's telling you it doesn't make sense based on what we know right now. And the third reason to consider Roth conversions is that you want to lower taxes to your heirs. You know, I see a fair number of cases where someone has saved more than they're going to spend. And a lot of times that money is in an IRA or a 401k. And even though they're going to take distributions, there's no way they'll deplete the balance before they die. And in most cases, they're perfectly fine with this because they're just going to leave it to their kids. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that the rules have changed on how your kids are going to have to distribute that account. In the past, they could spread it out over the lifetime. But now they have to empty it out in 10 years. This means that if they have decent earnings, this is going to push them way up in the tax brackets, which ultimately means that more of your money is going to be left to Uncle Sam than you may have intended. For example, let's say that you're going to die with an IRA worth a million dollars and your daughter or son is married and they're both working. It's certainly conceivable that they could pay 25% or more of that inherited IRA in taxes. And if that would have been in a Roth IRA, they wouldn't have had to pay any taxes. So the question I often ask is, would you pay $100,000 in taxes if it meant your kids could avoid $300,000 in taxes. Now, obviously, those numbers are going to vary based on your situation, but we've seen lots of cases where that ratio holds true. So this is yet another reason to consider a conversion, even if it doesn't make sense over your lifetime or your retirement. Ultimately, I do think that everyone should have a Roth conversion analysis. It's not going to make sense for everyone for sure to actually do a Roth conversion but you have to at least get the numbers so you can make a decision. You don't want to be 75 and wondering if maybe you should have converted. So get the data, figure out how you feel about the data, and make a decision. And if you want help with this, we do this as part of every retirement roadmap plan we do. And if you're not familiar with our plan already, I'm going to link up a page down below that goes into more detail and has our calendar on it so you can actually schedule a call with either me or someone on my team, and we can talk this through. Thanks so much for watching. Look forward to talking to you soon.